Whenever we've talked about linear transformations, one of the things that I've always tried to be careful about is that while we had matrices that could do linear transformations from Rn to Rm, I always wanted to be sure and said that not every linear transformation is multiplication by a matrix. However, saying that is almost a little bit deceptive because there is usually a matrix for a linear transformation if we talk about coordinate vectors. Now, that does mean we have to be working with finite dimensional vector spaces. If we have an infinite dimensional vector space, we can't do coordinates, none of this applies. But if we have two different finite dimensional vector spaces, that means they each have a finite basis. And if we've got a linear transformation that takes V to W, whether we've got an Rn or a polynomial space or whatever, doesn't matter, we've got a linear transformation that does it, then there's a matrix which basically does to the coordinate vectors the same thing that the linear transformation does to the vectors. So that is, if we take any vector in V, it maps to a W, then multiplying the coordinate vector for V with respect to the basis for V times this matrix M should give us the coordinate vector for W. Now, I'm not going to do a very formal proof here, but honestly, just understanding the way this works is almost a proof as it is. So let's go ahead and say we've got basis vectors, B1, beta 2, up to beta, now let's take all these V1, V2, up to Vn. These are the basis vectors for V. And then we've got another set of basis vectors for W, which we'll talk about in a second. Let's start, because these things are basis vectors, they're elements of V. So what happens when I take the linear transformation of them? Well, I don't necessarily get the basis vectors of W, but I do get elements of W. So I'll just call these things W1 vector, W2 vector, WN vector. And because these are the elements of W, each one can be represented uniquely as a linear combination of elements in beta 2. So this is some A1 times beta W1 plus A2 times beta W2 all the way up to a, it doesn't have to have n, so let's give it a different thing, a m beta w m. And here, I'll have a b1, a b2, up to uh, b m, beta w m and so on down the line uh, I probably shouldn't have used a's and b's but it's getting confusing enough already with subscripts every one of these things has a linear combination well hold on so in terms of the coordinate vectors what we're saying since this is my first B vector, this is my first basis vector in, in the basis for V, its coordinate vector would be something where we've got one and then zeros everywhere else. And we're saying that's mapping to, well, the whole idea of the coordinate vector is it's mapping to A1, A2, down to AM. The second one, it's the second basis vector for V, so its coordinate vector would be 0, 1, 0 all the way down, and then that's mapping to B1, B2, all the way up to 
B M and so on down the line well let's think about that though I'm saying the whole point of this theorem is that if I've got a matrix M if I take a matrix M times this I get this if I take a matrix M the same matrix M times this I get this but if we think about one of the ways we've done this before is that multiplying a matrix times a vector the vector gives you the linear combination of the columns of the matrix this is just saying that the first column of M is exactly those coordinate vectors this says the second column of M is exactly those so right away we get that our matrix M has to be a1 a2 down to a m b1 b2 down to bm and as far out as we go i'll just say z1 z2 down to zm though i'm not saying here that we've got 26 columns it all depends on how many basis vectors we had so immediately this matrix takes coordinate vectors to coordinate vectors in the same way that the original linear transformation took vectors to vectors of, of W. Let's go ahead and stop this video here and let's do a specific example rather than trying to talk in general in the next video.